G'day everyone, welcome to another video by myself, Andrew DFT. And of course, by the title below, you can tell that this video is about the Destiny Auto Rifle EVA Foam Tutorial, Part 1. So to show you right off the bat, this is what you're going to be achieving by the end of the tutorial. A very simple and basic EVA foam rifle, which you can go take many extra steps if you wished, add in rails and add in a scope of your choice. I've also added a feature so that you can have the ability to make the magazine removable if you wish, putting magnets inside to allow for that extra customized feature. And then of course you can go ahead and paint it up however you wish to make it look resemblant for your costume or whatever you want to put it as. Now of course to complete this build you're going to need templates, you can go ahead and download those for free that I've created via the link in the description box below and just simply print them off and get started. Now the two Destiny costumes I've produced are the Warlock ones you can currently see on screen. Both Warlocks I was extremely happy with and were my first kind of attempts at doing sewing. So I was pretty happy with how they turned out and of course I had one of the uh, Destiny Auto Rifles I built out of Styrofoam. Now this tutorial was originally going to be from Styrofoam but I found it far too difficult to transfer everything I wanted to teach into a tutorial. So therefore I had to jump into a more easy and uh, effective material which would of course EVA foam. But yeah, that's enough of an intro, let's jump in and get started on this build. You will be using uh, two different types of foam here, the standard half inch foam as well as a few 3mm pieces which uh, you can obtain from most stationary stores, it's just a nice smaller thinner foam. But let's jump in. Alright, so to kick things off, go ahead and print out the templates, you should have 5 sheets required for this tutorial, then go ahead and tape it together so that way we can cut out the entire block of this design from its foam. Sorry, from its paper barriers. What you can then do is go ahead and cut out all the individual sections that I'm pointing out here. These are just additional features we don't actually want to be transferred onto the foam at this stage. Once we have cut them off, you can then go cut off the actual support shoulder rest section as well. So that way they're two separate pieces to allow us to transfer them and fit within the confinements of the foam. Being sure to flip the template at least once so we have the left and the right side and do your best to go ahead and cut out the individual segments being sure to cut right down on a 90 degree angle so that way when we combine the two pieces the left and the right they do come together quite seamlessly now don't worry if you didn't get it 100 percent uh, seamless you can cover those stuff up later but for now what we will do is make a uh, a quick update to a mistake I made, I forgot to actually take out the trigger guard section. It's actually easier doing it now, so it's kind of worked out in our advantage, but just mark that out on the uh, foam using the template as a negative spacing, and then just cut it out. Be sure to do that on both sides. Then you can take your adhesive of choice, whether that's art cement or large cement or hot glue. I prefer hot glue just because it's nice and easy, although it does burn. <laughs> well, at least it doesn't poison you. You can go ahead and glue all those together, being sure to work in stages so that way the glue actually sets and then you move your way across, otherwise you might have some issues of it setting and not sticking as well as you'd like. But that just comes down to practice and it depends on what you're using as your adhesive. Now this is the stage where you'll notice that there are some inconsistencies in the joining, so you can go ahead, mark out where those are needed to be addressed and simply adjust them by cutting off the segments to make them flush. Once you've gone around the whole design and made sure it's all good, you can simply glue the butt section of the gun into the main rifle and have it as a solid piece. Alright, so we'll start off with some detail and work our way from the back of the gun forward. What you can do is grab this template marked on the screen, transfer it on and lay in that vertical line. We'll then jump ahead, leaving that for now, and grab this template here, lay that onto the foam and transfer the outline so we know exactly where this position is. We can then go ahead and add a depth line, as if you've done many of the tutorials prior to this one, you'll know exactly what this is for. We can then go ahead with that craft blade and we're actually going to bevel off this edge. That means you're linking the top outline to the lower depth line to create a nice sloped slant giving it a far more 3D appearance. We can then go ahead and add this uh, vertical, sorry, horizontal line up top. We'll also give that a depth line about a quarter of the way through that foam thickness and go ahead and bevel off that as well. This way the bottom and the top have a nice curved system going so it doesn't look like a solid 90 degree kind of block. Now we're going to start to build some of the extra layers out of the full thickness of foam, but we're not going to lay it in just yet. We're just going to get it built to work our way through the gun. So grabbing that template, transferring it with foam, flipping it over so we get a left and a right. Now we'll go ahead and start to add in some of these beveled edges. You can see, of course, they're clearly marked out with the dashed lines. So we can go ahead, lay those into the top and the bottom, and then at a depth line about three quarters of the way through the foam. So it's a significant slope adding in here. Then, of course, once you've got those in, go ahead with that sharp craft blade and slice off those edges giving us the nice new curves. 
We'll then break apart the template a bit further and cut off this individual segment you can see here and simply just draw that in. We're not going to bevel this edge, we're just going to leave that as a line that will score and give some heat treatment later. Now we'll cut out this tiny segment marked in the bottom here. It's very small so you, you might miss it, but go ahead, cut that out and then lay it into position on the foam, adding in that tiny little depth and we'll just simply cut that off. It's really a very tiny piece of detail, but it just adds a bit more of a difference if you go ahead and bevel off that edge, making it look a bit nicer. We'll now tackle the handle. Now of course you'll notice the handle wants to be nice and curved, so we'll go ahead and cut out the uh, dashed perimeter edge and then add that depth line about halfway through the thickness of foam and you can simply go ahead and cut around being sure to rotate the blade around to make sure it's a nice smooth and uh, symmetrical cut on both sides but that shouldn't be too difficult for you now for the front what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cut off this front segment now this is done into two pieces but we'll work on the front at the moment which will then add a depth line and go ahead and just cut out we will then add the additional detail using a separate piece of foam. It's just going to be a lot easier to do it that way. But take your time, make sure you get this part cut out rather nicely, so that way you don't have to worry about having it look bad. Now you can grab the second part that we just were doing before, cut that out as the main piece, and then transfer it onto some small 3mm foam, or whatever small thickness of foam you have available. You can then flip it to make sure you've got two sides, a left and a right, and then simply glue it into position exactly where it should sit, right at the edge of that bevel piece we did. This just adds a whole new 3D uh, aesthetic to it, because we've got a cool bunch of braised edges and beveled edges going on. You can then jump back to that small piece we cut out earlier and glue that also into position. We're now going to go ahead and cut out this main segment here. It's a big piece, so it shouldn't be too hard. What you can then do is use the negative spacing from where we've just cut it out and transfer in where it's going to sit. That way we know where to glue it later down the line. What you can do now is go ahead and transfer that template onto a foam and cut out two new slabs of it. Once we've got the slab, we can then go ahead and break apart the template and get some of this detail transferred in. We'll start with this piece here. As long as you cut it out clearly like I've done on screen, you shouldn't have an issue. Mark out where it should be. We'll start to add in some of these beveled edges. This is gonna be a bit of a tricky technique here, but most of you should get it down pretty sweet. So once you've got in all those horizontal lines, you can add that depth line marked there and go in with the blade. You can start with the bottom and of course cut that off. That's nothing new, it's just pretty much exactly what we're doing. But for this piece, what we're gonna do is cut halfway into the foam on a vertical slope and then come back in on the 45 degree and bevel out that edge. It should pop, but it gives a very cool 3D aesthetic and uh, look and feel just from one whole solid piece. We can now start to break the template apart even further and transfer some of this vertical lines in which of course we scored and heat treated and become detailed later on. So go ahead and break apart the template and slowly transfer on all those vertical lines as needed and where exactly they should be in the uh, real space. Once you've got those on we'll then go to the other part of the template we've neglected for the past minute or two and we'll start to transfer those spacing in as well. You'll notice here I'm adding in these uh, horizontal lines which bridge the two compartments together and what we can do now is we can go ahead and depth line and we'll go ahead and actually bevel off this whole section. Now what you're gonna do is very carefully go through and slowly because you'll notice that it's a rather intense slope, but you do wanna get that uh, slope looking really nice and clean because it's gonna be a centerpiece of detail throughout the whole design. Now you're gonna take the remaining template you've got here and cut it out into these segments. So you should have this strange looking compartment here, transferred onto some of the smaller three millimeter foam or so to make a separate piece, being sure to flip the template so you have a left and a right. And then what you can do is you can glue it in as an additional segment to raise this and give it a bit more of a 3D appearance and just have it sit in there nicely. Of course, it should slot on there pretty fantastic because you are using the templates, which of course have been the main structure for this entire build. Then once that's all good to go, you can go ahead and glue it into the lines you put in earlier to help mark out where it should sit. So hopefully that's not a problem. We can now go ahead and tackle the ammo side. So pretty much following the exact same process, grab the template, chuck it onto the foam, flip it so you have a left and a right. And then what you can do is lay it into the uh, slot where it should be and see if it fits. If it doesn't and you notice some inconsistencies in the levels like I'm already uh, noticing here and trimming off, making the adjustment as needed, go ahead and make sure that all fits snug before progressing. Once that's all sorted, we'll go ahead and tackle the uh, sloped edge, the uh, beveled edge, by laying in that horizontal line, of course the one marked with the dashes, and then add a depth line about halfway through that layer of foam. Then take the nice sharp craft blade, take that edge off, giving us the nice 3D appearance, and be sure to be as clean as possible, because this is a quite centerpiece of the design, so you want it to look like it. 
What you can then do is go ahead and cut out the templates into this two segments. Take the far right piece and actually chuck it onto some smaller foam and then do the same with the internal segment here. These are gonna be extra pieces that we're gonna lay on just to give it a bit more of a 3D appearance. Of course, when you paint this, this will help differentiate the layers and the color tone. Once you've got those all glued in, now you shouldn't have any problem. We can actually go ahead and glue that whole segment back onto the actual piece knowing that you've uh, made those adjustments so it should slot in perfectly and not have any problems with getting glued into there. So hopefully it should be slotting in there and it's really starting to come together. But to finish this individual segment off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create one long strip, the same thickness as that smaller piece we just did and glued. What you can do is apply some glue and we're gonna wrap this all the way around. It just gives us a nice extra layer of detail and helps seal these things together. Of course, it might have a bit of overhang, but that's fine. Just clearly mark off where it ends and snip it off so it is nice and flush. But yeah, I think we'll leave it there for part one. So that's it. Hopefully you guys have followed along and you've got all this starting to really build up. Of course, now you can see we've got the front sections to go and do, as well as this bridge here to allow for the magazine to go in, as well as some top extra detail to really finish this gun off. That'll all be achieved in part two and very easy to achieve as well. It's all just literally gluing more pieces on pretty much exactly how we've just done these additional ones. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, Click that thumbs up, it lets me know you enjoy the content, so it gives me more inspiration to go ahead and do more, knowing that you enjoy them. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, maybe you should consider doing so. I've got some cool content on the way. You don't want to miss it. And if your mates or anyone else you think might like to make this, definitely flick them the link. We want as many people to make as many cool guns as we can in this cosplay community, so why not? Otherwise, I'll let you go ahead and get into part two. Thank you for watching this, and of course, until the next one, catch you later.